in regards to black people, I don't think we should be jumping in everyone's fight because literally it's the reason why we can't unify because mm. I feel like we're, we're too in, involved in everyone's thing. People would be saying, how can they support the channel? Chisel, bye, chisel. I've got tops, I've got hoodies, I've got the Dragon Ball Z tees, like the Pain and Full Star tees. You lot could support, buy some of the merch. I'll be able to churn out more content. This one, I'm just waiting by myself for the, for the moment and I'll bring out more colors. Please support. The events at Box Park, so Box Park Talks. Yeah, what made you yeah. start that? Uh, I wanted to get more experience as a presenter. Mm -hmm. And so that kind of just made more sense. I've been a resident DJ at Box Park for like five, six years. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. It's been oh, a while, wow. yeah. Thank yeah. you. Um, so, yeah, so it's just kind of a very homely environment to me. Mm -hmm. And I w I've been wanting to transition over to doing more presenting and hosting and stuff like that for a while. And, yeah, I just approached them and asked them if I could do a talk show. Yeah. And initially, this, the first one was September last year. Last year. And um, the topic was cancel culture. Mm -hmm. I had Deborah from Blue Therapy mm -hmm. and DJ Ace and Mark Cuban. Yeah. And then, <laughs> no, but the thing is, <laughs> no, let me finish. No, hang on a second. No, because I don't want it. Grace is so evaporating. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to. Hang on a second. I don't want to play the game because the thing is, right? Mm. Obviously, I knew that there was some controversy around his name before I booked him. Yes, I'm aware of that. But that's the topic is cancel culture. So I'm not going to run away from someone who is potentially mm -hmm. being cancelled mm -hmm. to speak about cancel culture. He's and the have best person to even <laughs> you know what, <laughs> This is what I mean. Yeah. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. You can have a panel. Does it even work, cancel culture, do you think? Do I think it works? Mm, not really. No. I don't think it does. I think it depends on who it you are. It makes it harder for you to get if, to mm, You if might you, be cancelled to if a you're, certain... No, nah, if you're prepared... But other people... Yeah, if you're prepared for to what's write coming, that on, yeah, what's then, coming, yeah, then yeah, then yeah. it doesn't work. Because the things I've seen yeah, to pop up on more things recently again, mm -hmm. so that's why I'm like, does it really work? I think yeah, to some extent, yeah. and maybe for a period of time. Like I interviewed um, Yinka Bokini last week, mm -hmm. yeah, and she said she's I've been cancelled about twelve times. Okay, yeah. the first time she was like, I'm depressed, I'm really sad, like she yeah. was really upset, yeah. devastated, yeah. Yeah. and then she's like, by the fifth time you're like i don't care right, right, like yeah. Nothing, yeah. nothing really came of it i'm still here i'm still working yeah. i'm still mm -hmm. busy yeah so i think to some extent it works but it's not like a mm -hmm. it's not a deal breaker i'm enjoying it a lot really? i would like yeah. to get into presenting that's what i was asking yeah i think it'd be think good <laughs> i think you would mm -hmm. the thing is what it is is that when you're a presenter, especially with what I do, obviously I do the talk show, I'm usually the person asking the question. Okay, fair enough. Whereas you're so used to answering the questions mm, in some respects. Okay. So that might be the only difficult difference. Trend, you seem good at interrogation though. Sorry? You seem good at interrogation. Um. <coughs> it's thank just you. an observation. It's <laughs> just, just say thank you. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> 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 I'm, I, you know, I had to think about that one like, right, she's going she to interrogate me. Like. <laughs> No, you just seem direct. It's not a bad thing. I, I think it's with you see when you're trying to get out there or be something out there. I think it's really good to try and think about what you want to be known for. What mm. can you keep up with? What can you be consistent in? Mm. And I realize I can just consistently be myself. Mm -hmm. mm. So that way I'm not thinking too hard. Um, it may not be digestible for everybody, but that's what will make me stand out. And um, when I look at girls always pretend they don't look at other girls or look what other people are doing i look at the other girls pretty girls not pretty girls not attractive attractive girls how why am i different from hey them? you can't say girls are not pretty they won't cancel you I, I can say that because it's the truth you they're gonna come and cancel you boy yeah hey could you say girls are not pretty you know, even i <laughs> yeah man it was um it was a long time ago when sorry no, <laughs> Uh, even I am not going to be digestible for everybody. We're not for everyone. Do you know <laughs> what I mean? Like, I feel like we need to stop this. Well, well the internet, the internet is trying to do kumbaya. Everyone I has this, you know. It don't last. But it, yeah. I mean, it lasts, it last. and then it lasts for like two seconds, and then the but same person. Reality. Yeah, like people. The internet's all of this full of kind yeah. and all of that was a thing, it, and it then don't it just last. wasn't a thing. Do you know what I mean? And yeah. it pops up every so often when something devastating happens and then people <coughs> just go back to being internet warriors. Um, so obviously the, all the controversy that came about with the guests that I had on my, um, on my talk show, um, I think that controversy came about in like, I don't know, May, some earlier this year. You know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and 
another person went onto um, Twitter space and basically mentioned that I had him on my show. Yeah. And within Tracky, 20 Tracky. minutes, yeah. I had people in my DMs and in my comments yeah. being highly disrespectful yeah. to me. And I'm like, bro, I booked him six months before this even came about. Like, what are we talking about here? Do you know what I mean? But that's, that's, that's how social media is. They're always looking for someone to make the scapegoat. And 100%. unfortunately, it goes back to the thing where, because you're a good looking woman as well. Thank you. <sighs> I'll take it. <laughs> they're going to they, come for you. They're going to say that, right? I know. She, she's doing pick me for him. Da, 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 da. Outrageous. Yeah, Apparently, yeah, I don't stand yeah. for women and I don't stand yeah, for yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That. I'm like, bro. These times they don't know all the things you do in the back end. Exactly. Taking it like, way too far. I, I don't stand for anything. I just stand for what it is I believe in that moment of time. And people yourself. People need to understand that people change their minds. Mm. Yeah. Our opinions change. We, we grow, change. We develop. Yeah, like, constantly. so you can't, I can say A today and a couple of months down, based on being educated or exposure, my beliefs can change on something. So mm -hmm. I think people have to also be a bit more adaptable to people's, like, practices and changes. Do you think, think that applies to racism? Well, you think someone can stop being racist, you mean? Well... I mean, take the question how you feel is applicable mm. just in the sense of the piece that you said about people learn and adapt mm. and change and grow. Do you think that applies? Um, so, you, you know, I feel something like racism is so core, right? The stuff we talk about is really surface based. Mm -hmm. Like, I see racism as core as religion. Do you know what I mean? It's something maybe deep. It's something you have to fine tune, fine comb. Like you have to go through all the peels of an onion to understand what the core root of you being racist is. You can educate a white man, or you can er educate a black person on different races, because I think we are all racist. It's just different types of racism. Racism, but um, I don't think someone can wake up tomorrow and change their minds. I think they have to either go through an experience or see something that happens for them to maybe start having an open mind to something i don't think you can just wake up and turn around and say you're not racist anymore unless you've experienced something why do you think we're all racist because you hear black people say mad things about other cultures as well and it's still a form of racism like they can look at an asian person and say certain things and they say in private yeah so racism is not just about you being black and white no of course yeah. but do you think that applies to everyone though no, but it's <coughs> not black and white. It's not every white person who's racist as well. Yeah, of course. It's just because you say, I think we're all racist. So as I in, like, I mean, all... Um, everyone has the ability to Yeah, be everyone has the ability and every culture, or every demographic of people, mm -hmm. there they are parts of them or a group of them who have some sort of racism. All older generations of every culture, they, they say what, what's on their mind. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they yeah. say it in the, <laughs> in the rudest and harshest way. they don't know other way to communicate. Yeah. I yeah. remember their generation we're not as multicultural as us. Mm -hmm. So back in the day, let's say like we landed in England, all Nigerians were just stuck together. They would only go to parties with Nigerians. They won't mix with no one else. It would be the same with Ghanaians, it would be the same with Jamaica. Like you would literally stay with who you know. Mm. But fast forward now, where our culture's all intertwined, where someone would be like, oh yeah, you, you, let's say like in my family, you look at the younger generations, you ask them, oh, where's your dad from? Oh yeah, he's half Jamaican, half. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. We're more... To, to some extent, but do you feel like... Sometimes I feel like there is still a divide between Caribbeans and Africans. 100%. People. 100%. Mm -hmm. And I mean yeah. our generation, like... 100%. Yeah. Our age. But remember, our age is still connected with... The older generation. The older generation. Yeah. That's where the problem, right? And it all... Batch. Yeah, we're the last batch. Yeah. And it all starts from, like, school days. Mm -hmm. Where... Uh, I've had talks with people recently about it, where all of a sudden it's like a trend, like Nigerian men this, Nigerian men that. Mm -hmm. But there's a bunch of girls I went to school with, my first school, when I landed in England, where for years, probably up until the past couple of years, I never used to say nothing to them. And they'll come to my dances and I'll act like I don't know them. And my bedroom was like, Ra, how come you never say nothing to them? I'm like, Ryan, you're seven. Uh, these were the ones you always used to be like, Ra, boo boo this, blah, 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 that. Mm -hmm. every, every African joke, was there they thought it was bent then after a while i thought to myself you know what yeah i'm being a prick because mm. these girls have been nice to me Pfft, boy for the past 18 plus years mm -hmm. like they didn't know no better they were like little kids yeah you know what i mean but i held on to what they were at 11 mm -hmm. and for years i just used to literally walk through them yeah so like they'll be talking to my brothers leon and that 
and I'll just be like, I see them and whatever, like, oh yeah, yeah, I'll just walk off. Okay. And them lot are like, you always do that when they're around. Mm -hmm. So one day, like, I just remember one of them was working the bar at one of my parties. Mm -hmm. I've gone to order a drink, and I've just said something to her. And she, she said to me, right, like, I didn't think you remembered me. I said, no, I know who you are. I said, yeah, I just, yeah, yeah, and I explained the way it was. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's what happened. But, <laughs> it's true. but it goes back to even <laughs> things where on the internet where people talk about colorism and they say like, uh, black women this da da da, and I'm like, rah, you lot don't remember the dark skin jokes, you know, was running in school. Right. But the thing is, for me, it didn't hit me like it hit other people because mm. I'll say like maybe because one, I was a fresh and when I came, like, for me, it was just like, right, what's wrong with these people? Mm -hmm. And then fast forward to, like, year 11, like, the girls who were busting the dark skin jokes, all of a sudden, we was in flavour. Yeah. So, was, like, within, like, four years, it a, changed, you know what I mean? It was a very, very clear yeah. transition. But um, when I, I, I witnessed it as well. But when I first moved here, like, in year seven, it was only, like, light skin girls and white girls who liked me. Mm -hmm. It was weird to me. So, yeah. like, when my brethren were, like, uh linking and dating girls like early like you know like that first little crushes like because mm -hmm. i'd come from back home and i already had my type mm -hmm. i didn't get in it so i was thinking right oh, how come they don't like me mm -hmm. i think that's a lot to do with upbringing though like my, my dad is dark skin mm. my, my brother's dark skin and in my family we're all different complexions and there was never that we were all raised to be confident, no matter mm. what, the, what what your complexion is. And yeah. I'm not saying that that wasn't the case with you. I'm just saying, in my household, it was like all of the. I have three older sisters yeah. and a little brother, and all of my older sisters just loved dark skin men. No, that like I said, me. like I said earlier, like I said, they they didn't affect me because I was just baffled by them. Because yeah. remember, I came from back there in it, so mm -hmm. I already knew, and I already had my 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 type as well. So when I'd come over here, and I'm just like, oh, okay. But I was getting attention from white girls and black skin girls. I was, I was baffled. I was like, "How come the black girls?" It's confusing, but you I know feel what like mean? that's based on their household. So if you've come from a household where yeah. you haven't been taught to love your complexion yeah. and, the, and the fact that you are black, yeah. no matter what complexion you are, then you might pull up at school and start chasing the, the so light skin guys. I don't believe in if you're not brought up from a household where you should love your complexion because my mum never raised our complexion. Like it wasn't a conversation we had. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you get what I mean? Like it was just. I like black people so sometimes it's just literally what's embedded in you yeah mm. or maybe subconsciously what you're exposed to yeah like i went to i've always been like the only black girl in a lot of situations like the only black person in the whole school mm -hmm. that's been well, me okay. do you know what i mean yeah so i've always been around yeah literally only white people but i still gravitate to black men yeah, yeah. do you get what i mean so i don't think i think sometimes mm. yeah what you're exposed to or what you're taught but sometimes it's just whatever your preference is embedded in you mm. because someone like me should be awful white guys but, but you know you say that yeah like someone like you because if that sorry to interrupt but yeah. if that was the case then I, I guess obviously people can change and develop but mm. how is it that you were so into light skin guys when we were in year nine mm -hmm. or i don't know whatever age mm -hmm. and then a couple years then later, a couple years like, later it, it flipped yeah. No, but social media didn't even, even exist then. That, that was a thing. Yeah, like, the only thing I think the only things that dropped then was well, like TV the and stuff like that and being embraced. Because if you notice that period you're talking about, you saw a lot of dark skinned girls in the music video. You started to see them in the music video. You started. To I see think them with guys, maybe the films like The Wood, Baby Boy, and that yeah, dropped around so, them, them yeah, times. But, so it was start, you were but starting. I, I get that part, but it just the switch was so rapid. Yeah, that's. It that's, was like they went from. Looking at Genuine and like Shamar Moore and them yeah, kind of brothers still. Yeah, but having trick songs and stuff like that, so it changed that. That okay, being dark skin, you can see attractive people. It's like one thing I really hate about like the white market, if that's what you want to call it, or the white industry, is that when they choose black girls, why do you always choose the ones that are not as pretty? Because they are loads of pretty black girls. Or like when you go to America, they say stuff like, oh my gosh, I didn't know British girls were pretty. It's because you're watching TV and you're just seeing the, the not deadest food. Yeah, yeah. Not so it's the same thing. Like, yeah. there are beautiful black girls out here and there's beautiful <coughs> men as well. Like, there's some, you see there's some dark skinned girls, yeah? Like, when I look at them, I'm just like, how? You look like a masterpiece. You look 100%. like marble. Yeah, like, yeah, there's yeah. no imprint. There's nothing. Glow. The shade is yeah. just, it's just information. Flawless. Do you know what yeah, I mean? And yeah. 
if they were to put that more on the screen, people will start to realize, and that's what they did. They started putting it out there a bit more, and people started to realize that okay, yeah, there is. But when it comes to the white industry, I know they put certain type of black girls mm-hmm. because I feel like they still want to. I don't know if I should say oppress us or it's a case that they still want to keep that in a knit. They don't want us to have too much boundaries. So then if that's the case, why don't we just create our own lane? And that's why I love the Jews and Asians. They create their own lane for everything. Mm. If we can't be amongst you, we'll be above you. That's what the Jews have done, right? And then the Asians have done, if we can't be with you, we'll create our own thing. Do you understand? But I still think us black people are trying to figure out what it is we want to do because they've obviously found different things that work for them. And like, we need to find what works for us. Yeah. And I think what works for us is just creating our own lane. We are so intelligent. Like, when you speak to... <coughs> most of the, the things I know now, it's just having... It's since my podcast, because I've sat down with a lot of men and just, just brought my attention to a lot of things. Even women have brought my attention to a lot of things. And I feel like if we had the, the tools, the opportunity, you know, the places where we can sit down and have these conversations, not look like, oh, you're a waste man or you're a... You're all these stuff or you, you're uh, a pick me do you know what I mean like if there wasn't a name for everything we try to do I think we'll flourish a lot more a lot more but how you said even how you said all these groups how they think I think that's why at the moment the guy at the moment that's on every platform that they're trying to cancel I think that's why he tried to get himself cancelled to prove a point oh. I think that's why he tried to get himself cancelled <laughs> to prove a point if you think about it in the deeper field, what do you think he's trying to do? He's not okay. No, he's okay. trying to remove himself from I, bare I think things. But a, I think there's a, there's, there's a fine there's a balance. line. Yeah, yeah, there's a fine there's a line. No, he's, he's, he's proved the point. I'm being crazy, but I also don't think... But at the same time, I think he's, he's proved really the point. He's intelligent, right? Mm-hmm. And one of the things we can't do... I think he's on a spectrum. Of what? Yeah, like, agreed. Yeah. Of um, autism. Autism, yeah. yeah. yeah but he's got... He's, wait... You see, the thing with Kanye is Kanye. A lot of the things that Kanye says is true, but it's his delivery that's the problem. But what and he's done now is he's proved a lot of things true. Yeah. Okay. Without meaning to. Mm, but this maybe is, maybe he meant to, but it, it's come like the way he's been dropped off everything. If he said the same thing about black people, this is the, this is the exact same things would be running. Wiling, no? I I get it, but at the same time, I still I still believe he is not in a position to be being given those platforms to say what he's saying right now. You always know when he's had a prelapse or when he's not taking his meds because he's erratic and people are using it for entertainment. I always say, God forbid something happened to that guy. No, they, yeah, they, they, they are, say, but, but at the same time, it's a thing, yeah. But it's a thing where it comes back to the, the cancel culture. Do you think we should join in their bandwagon canceling? Because I'm seeing, I'm seeing, cer- I'm seeing certain helped. like black, well-known people are, oh, yeah, we we don't we don't agree with Kanye. Then I'm like, rah, like you didn't need to say nothing. Mm-hmm. It wasn't your fight because mm-hmm. when 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 no, it's, it's not their no, but it's Sometimes not their fight. Because when it's when it's black people being bolder than everything, they keep quiet. A lot of people don't say. A lot of people don't say nothing. Yeah, you saying should know. They, they should. Don't want it to their money. No, they should know a time and a place. It's not. It, it's not affecting your money if you don't talk. And association. Yeah. So no, but it's not affecting your money if you don't talk. Just don't could, get involved. It could, if you're affiliated with him. But they're not. They're Even not, people who are not affiliated like are jumping brands, in, brands, jumping in the in the, in the, in in the, the thing. Trevor Noah's and all these people, they're jumping in the convo. Because they don't, it's a hot topic. They're, they're jumping in the conversations for entertainment, not because they're No, but at the same time, they're trying to themselves. make themselves look like Holy Out Dow off his name. They don't, need, they, don't need, they don't need to, because when, when it's things against black people, you're not seeing people from other cultures think you're right, let's jump in the, you see this in the life, frying pan. This life is a cycle. One minute you're biting someone, the other minute you're being bit. But that's, that's, but, that's what No, but is. that's the reason why and black people are, as a whole are not winning because as a whole, there's no unity. It's like, right, Kanye yeah, is this. All right, cool, game. Kanye is this, but he's doing his madness. Let's just... We just you, know, you get what I'm saying? Let's try and help him, game. but let's stay away from him. But let's not jump in and try and push him out. You get what I'm saying? I get what you're saying. Don't get me wrong. I get what but, you're saying. Because they wouldn't do that. For us. They wouldn't do that for us. But I know this sounds mad, but why do we always need them to do stuff for us? Exactly. So we shouldn't do for them. <laughs> That's my point proven. Yeah. We shouldn't That's, be doing for them. For me, it's you choose one. It's either you're against them or you're going to play the game with them. You have to choose which one you and, want and to And the be. game is not and to in, get involved on their side. And, Just stay away from a it. A lot of people are hot and cold. Whereas for me, I would like to believe I'm someone that will play the game with them. 
my beliefs stay in my beliefs, yeah. right? There's certain things what I stand for that I'm not obviously gonna, that you're not gonna shift regardless of what mm-hmm. kind of game we're playing. But for instance, someone like me, you're not gonna see me tweeting saying that I'm against Kanye. Because I haven't, you know what, I haven't started. I don't started, get involved in them topics. Really. No, but I haven't started yeah. my branding like that. You yeah. see those other guys that are speaking, they've yeah. started their branding or say mm. they're against this, they're not for yeah. this, they're for that. So they have to consi- be consistent. That's mm. why I said, when I said at the start that when I wanted to be on social media, I had to know what I wanted to stand for and I mm. said I wanted to be myself. Right? Those people have created a facade or a branding that is in line with them having to say something like, oh, I'm against this because that's what they normally do. They normally always pick up on things and say what they are yeah. for or against. So if they were to now say, oh, nothing about Kanye, be like, mm, I thought you said you were real. You keep it 100. Mm. How come you're not speaking on it? People yeah. probably pressured them and said like, well, you know they how they pressured comment. you and they DM'd you comment. and stuff? Yeah. They're probably yeah. doing that and they felt the pressure. But at the same time, you know they're not real because they're, they're, they're saying what they, they're saying what they expect what they're saying what is expected of them to say to keep exactly. making so in order their bag. longevity in anything you do you always have to ask yourself what do i want to stand for in anything you want to do be it your nine to five career business in order to have longe- longevity you have to always be clear on what you stand for within yourself because that's what will continually push you once you have your own purpose you can go in different directions of life in general my yeah. purpose could be that i want to help black people yeah. i can go into social media i can go to music i can go to this that that because my purpose is still the same but where i decide to divulge that purpose can change i'm I, like i said in regards to black people i don't think we should be jumping in everyone's fight because literally, it's the reason why we can't unify. Because mm. I feel like we're, we're too in, involved in everyone's thing. I just mm. think we talk too You know too what I mean? Like, we should just literally sometimes just let these people sort out their own communities. Because when it comes to us... But do we I have a question, though. Yeah. But it's nice. Um, yeah. It's unrelated to this, actually, is what we were talking about before. Okay. Do you want to finish what you're saying? No, yeah. I was going to ask that. Do you think... Uh, do you think white people jump into our stuff? No. All right. Do you think black people jump into their stuff? We, we we try to support everyone. We're involved in too much. We're involved. We're we're involved in too much. Way too I much. I think more more more. It's more Black. this way yeah, than yeah, that yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. It's it's not much, everyone right? jumps in, but yeah. I would say that there's more people Some, who are. Vulnerable. A lot of white people jump into our stuff as well. Yeah. Yeah. Because it get in fact, like yeah. I said, it depends what, what they it, stand for. Do you know what exactly. I mean? It depends what your branding is, and that's what I'm saying. Where it's beneficial. People. It's just that a lot of black people, their branding is against us, not for us. That's why you see, it's the branding that you've initiated from yeah. the start when you've chosen to do whatever industry you've chosen to get into. So you've chosen that industry. Now you can't get out now because you're in too deep. Yeah. And unfortunately, the that other side, they are very... That's why even when I was talking about the branding and the kind of people you employ, they're very intentional with every day decision you yeah. make. Because it, all, it every decision builds something. It's like building a human body. You can't build a human body without the heart. You can't have a human body that functions without the lungs. Like, do you know what I mean? Every single thing is required. And every type of you know organ you have determines the kind of life you have, right? Mm-hmm. If you have a, a bad, bad lung, you're breathing, you might be asthmatic. Mm-hmm. Every type of organ or every type of feature you put into whatever you're building, it, it, it determines the outcome you have. So that's why I say that these people have determined their outcome way before they got to where they are. Yeah. And now it's too late. Yeah. And they have to speak. Yeah. Um, a question for you guys. Mm-hmm. So where are your parents from? Nigeria. Nigeria. And? Ghana. Okay. So you, have <coughs> both of you or either of you dated Caribbean girls before? Yes. All my exes are. Would you bring one home? To marry. Have all my exes off. That's not what I asked. I said, <coughs> would you bring one home to marry? Yeah, my mom was trying to get me to marry my ex. Oh, really? Yeah. And oh. there's... So, so, you gonna say something? What's wrong with dating a Caribbean? No, no. I'm, oh, okay. Me, I'm Caribbean. There's, oh, nothing wrong with okay. <laughs> there's nothing wrong with dating a Caribbean. Yeah. I just want to ask the question because it's kind of like what we were talking about before in terms of the divide. Yeah. I'm just wondering, like, if... I find that maybe in the past that was like an issue yeah potentially. I, I've, I've, date, I've, issue? Da- I've, date, I've dated someone before who like like she was from uh, where's she from she's Canada but Jamaican she was like oh yeah we, we won't be able to go serious because my dad said don't bring no one who's not that's yeah. what I was going to say because yeah. I feel like yeah. I feel like said, um, don't bring no one who's not Jamaican with yeah. with Caribbean yeah, like, definitely not African boys women like, right, cool or what has been my experience and what has been a lot of my peers' experience has been, yeah, don't bring no, don't bring home no African. Like, yeah. it's been, 
it's been like a consistent theme, I would say. And whereas, I think from the from my experience, from the African perspective, it seems more, not so much that they're Caribbean or wherever they're from, they're just not from the same place. And mm-hmm. so there's a, a, a diluting culture and, and things of that standing. And it, as I say, through my experience, it, it seems as though it's more, the the divide is definitely there, but there's more kind of a, no, nah, don't, don't do that from mixing with, with Caribbean women, I would say. In my experience personally, I've I've found that, like I've my parents have not really been, you know. My pops especially has been like just whatever makes you happy kind of thing, mm-hmm. um, <coughs> and then there's there's been, again in and around my circle, there's there's been difference of opinion and different influences from parents, but I feel like it's not, it's not as heavy on the, don't bring home that it's just more a want for something closer to home. Mm-hmm. So like, say for example, I find African parents will tolerate something more from a suitor or a, a partner for their child that's mm-hmm. from the same background. I.e., if there's, let's say, a Ghanaian girl is dating a Caribbean guy and he's got a lot going for him, the mum might, or the dad might, you know, they just might not really be feeling it. Whereas she could then bring home a Ghanaian guy who's got seven kids with five different women. But because he's Ghanaian, they'll be like, oh, you know, make it work somehow kind of thing. You know what I mean? No, but it's really like that. Yeah, they'll tolerate the same culture. Because it's like the culture is not lost. And it's sad, but that's that's some people's reality. Okay. What about... Like for yourself? Um, my parents don't mind. I, I feel like when I was younger, they, they may have had a bit of an issue with it. Like a mild issue. But what, what, when you say like a mild issue, what, what does that look like? Um, I don't think it would have been a deal breaker, but yeah. it may have been, and I'm talking like years ago. Mm-hmm. So probably more so when my sisters were dating as opposed to when, like since I've been dating. Mm-hmm. So maybe when my sisters were dating, my dad may have, may have had a bit of a... What's the time frame on that? Because I don't know... Oh, so we're talking like maybe 20 years ago? Okay. Maybe. Um, but I don't find that that's an issue anymore at all. They just want them to be happy. Um, but from my perspective, I would have thought that it would be more from... Because you guys have a stronger culture than, than us, ultimately. Mm -hmm. Um, in the sense of like traditions and stuff like that so I thought that the concern would be more so from your parents and you guys bringing home someone that's no my mum my mum when she was alive she 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 always used to be like she just wanted me to be happy but she always used to say rah bring a black woman home okay she was used to be black yeah like she was very specific on that like, like my sister's boyfriend is um, he's white mm-hmm. and they've been together for a long time and they're probably going to end up together forever mm-hmm. um, my mom doesn't care um, what I decide to marry or who I decide to marry but for me personally um, because I've got kids now it will have to be a black guy mm-hmm. because um, I wouldn't want to put my children in an environment with a man who doesn't understand their struggles mm-hmm. and I think it's unfair on them if I didn't have any kids then maybe I can date whatever but Unfortunately, decisions I've made and life changes, I now wouldn't consider marrying a white guy just to protect me. Follow me on Facebook here, Chisel Lifts here, and write on my Chisel Lifts page on Facebook what topics you want us to discuss. And let's start discussions on there, because that page, I've had it dormant for years, but I'm more active on there these days. So please put in there what topics you want to discuss, and yeah, we'll get that spoken about.